Do you have the streets? Do you have the streets? And the Zidane will always have the streets. A three-piece of UCL titles. Who the heck? Who the heck is great? No. This ain't what we're doing. This ain't what we're doing. We're not we're not doing this, no. Nah. No. Not doing this. It ain't happening, bro. It ain't happening, bro. Cause what we're not gonna do is disrespect. What we're not gonna do is disrespect. We're not gonna disrespect. Not disrespect, disrespect. You know, Charlie Boy Spike Lee. We're not gonna disrespect. Can I give you a World Cup? Two goals from open play against Brazil. Can I give you a Euros? Can I give you a UCL? The greatest goal ever scored in a UCL final. Can I give you arguably one of the most talented and greatest football players of all time? Can I give you the greatest? individual performance in football history in a single match for because Zidane coming out of retirement single-handedly forced a Brazil team with a peak Kaka a peak Dino Cafu and Ronaldo he forced them into an identity crisis that they're still suffering from today that's what Zidane did and Italy knew that that's why they got him in the sense of because we all know we all know. Even Italians know. Zidane stays on the pitch. He wins the World Cup for France. <laughs> he stays on the pitch. He wins the World Cup for, for, for France. Now, now, now what? Oh. Oh. And did I forget? Not only did he win a UCL as an assistant to Ancelotti, as a manager in his first managerial stint, a three-piece of UCL titles. So... Zidane might arguably, next to Beckenbauer, because the only guy who can have a claim is Beckenbauer, but Zidane could have a claim in being the greatest figure in football history, in terms of what he's done on the pitch and off the pitch. He could have a claim to be the greatest figure in football history. So, with this whole GOAT conversation, maybe Zidane is the GOAT, <laughs> if you look at on the pitch and off the pitch. So, that's what we're talking about. So, who... The heck? Who the heck is great? I'm gonna call you great. Lee Great. Lee Great. That's what I'm gonna call you. I know I'm not gonna use like the proper French pronunciation. Who the heck is great? Who the hell is great? Who the hell are you to open your filthy, stinking mouth and say you wouldn't take a call from Zidane? <laughs> because does anybody know who the heck great is? <laughs> Let's just be Does anybody know who the heck a dude called great is? Sorry. A brick called great. My mistake. How deep do you want to go in this convo? How deep do you want to go? You know, I mean, because maybe this is left for Monday nights. Because remember, Monday nights is when we do our members' hangers and where we are. It's a little bit much more free. To really say a lot of stuff that really can't be said on YouTube live because we'll be shut down. So we, we, we can be a lot more free and a lot more um, uncensored there, you know. So, um, but for you guys, I'll just say this, you know. He is North African, essentially. He is Algerian, essentially. And if you watched the Benzema doc that was on Netflix during his... Um, Exodus from the French national team. Benzema did allude to this. And I remember, you know, back in the day, you know, when, you know, studying French and everything, when Le Pen, I think it's, it's generally Le Pen, was really prominent in French politics. Now his daughter has now taken over. Huge, huge right-wing dude. And this, well, this was when it was sort of half and half, but I think there were probably more Caucasians than there were like, you know, Africans in the, in the, in the team. So, and I remember Le Pen making the points of, man, why are there so many of these blacks and, and so forth in the, in the French national team? 
But that is why this jersey is so significant because what this win was, because what did that team, what was the makeup of this French team? Obviously, you had Stefan Givash, you had Didier de Sean, you had Laurent Blanc, you had Batsez. But it's a team that had Henri, it's a team that had Desai, a guy who had already won two UCLs, one with um, Milan and one with Marseille. You had Zidane. Oh, sorry. Dodo do, do Gore was, was another of the Caucasians there. But you had um, Yuri Jokayev. Of, of course, you had Lilian Turam. And of course, you had Zidane. So the, and again, in that semi final, who scored the two goals? Lilian Turam. And in the final, who scored the, the, the two goals? Zidane. So it was significant to have a French team and a French walker win. Their very first walker win on French soil that was a combination of the whites and the Africans, um, those that are from, from France and the immigrants. So what that was supposed to do for France was, hey, le tricolore, like we are all together as one. We are all together as one, you know. And that's because people thought that it was significant because this would, would help to integrate and bring together the divides that were existing between the immigrants and, of course, the whites within France. But look, I've, I've, I've been to Paris. I know French, French people. My sister's been to Paris several times, and she, and she tells me. Because here's the thing, though. If you go to, like, the south of France and so forth, you know, where you see a lot more integration, boom, go to Paris, to the very posh, posh areas of France, <laughs> your eyes will be open. Because that's the you go to... People have known, I've been to Paris, I've known people who've gone to Paris and they've said, yeah, there is a very stock up nature of French people in Paris and, and so forth. So it, it's, it's, it gets, it gets sketchy, it gets sketchy there. So, um, and I mean, this is because, because my thing here is this, is this just down to the headbutt? But my thing though is this is that, you can say, oh my gosh, you let your team down. This wasn't the same as Bex in 98, where, no, you really didn't let your team down. Without Zidane, you don't qualify for the World Cup. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Let's just, let's just put this into perspective. Like, oh, you, you let your team down in the final. Without Zidane, who had to come out of retirement, France was struggling to even qualify for the World Cup. So he came, he was chilling out, relaxing, doing everything. He came out of retirement to help France qualify. He was struggling for qualification. And he was, between him and Cannavaro, he was one of the best players at that World, World Cup. And he put forth the greatest performance of all time by the individual, which is what he did to, to, to Brazil. <laughs> you know, he, single, he single-handedly gentrified Brazil. So you don't even qualify. Forget about getting to the final. You don't even qualify for the World Cup without Zidane. So it can't be that. It has to be. People just feel a way up about him. And I always, because since that incident, I was like, so that doesn't really do many things with the French team or doing links with France. And if, let's say, let's say you were born, let's say you were born in like 04 or like 03, and let's say you missed the 06 World Cup, you would think Zidane was Spanish. <laughs> Anybody born in 02, 03 or so forth would think that Zidane was Spanish because of how so let's say, yeah, yeah. So let's say you're like 20, so let's say, you're a teenager. Let's say you're 17, 18 now. You know, you were you were born in what's it called? You're born in 02. So, and let's say you're maybe in your either in your early 20s or in your teens or so forth. So you let's say you're born in 02, 03, 04, 05. Late sort of late teens, early tw um tw tw 20s, you'd think Zidane was Spanish based on just how him and France have just sort of just cut ties between one and one another. And again, looking at the at the World Cup, he was nowhere to be seen at, at that World Cup. And my thing is, no, okay, no one is checking for Platini. No one is checking for what is Jules von Fontaine. No one is checking for Stefan Givash. <laughs> okay, no one, okay, there is, there's not, it doesn't come close. France's greatest ever player is Zidane. And I'm, bro, I'm on that Mbappe train because, because we know what, what Mbappe did in our final. <laughs> we know what Mbappe's done in the World Cups. Mbappe and Zidane. Mbappe will never be Zidane. No matter what Mbappe does, there's nothing Mbappe can do that. And for me, I'll be real with you. No many players in today's era is Zidane. 
They're quality players. Messi, amazing. Neymar, amazing. Cristiano's career, what he's done, amazing. I even shout your boy Mbappe. It's down. Diff. Like, because basically, you know, I always say, you have to be there to, 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 to see it. Like, you, you have to be there. Because, because if you saw what the down was, because... I was talking to my brother about it over the Christmas break, and my brother was like, no, Zidane was, as a player, because <laughs> he, he was such a genius. Do you know there is a film that just follows Zidane for an entire match? Because you're dealing with a, you're dealing with a scientist, a footballing scientist, a footballing savant. So, so whenever anyone comes to Zidane, I take it very personally. I take it very personally because do, I don't joke with Zidane. I don't joke with the, with the Zid. You know, I've got R9, Maradona, Zidane. Because my thing is, you have to be there to sit because, like, it, there's moments. That's what he did against Brazil in that 06 World Cup. I was like, okay, all right, I've, I have witnessed greatness. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, boom. That was a moment in which, okay, I have been converted. Okay, this, this, I'm seeing something that is now otherworldly here. What this guy has done against Brazil? Brazil! <laughs> and not just on Brazil, actually the most talented Brazil team, team of, of all time. What he did was like, okay, 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 all right, okay. Zip it. <laughs> so, and if I'm Zidane, man, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear any, um, ex, um, stories on social because I am, because I'm so angry. I'm so angry because I'm like, wow. Imagine if Zidane comes in with a new, whole new French team. You have Coman coming through office. You have so Mbappe already there. Who knows what this Moani guy can, can do? You have um, Konati coming through. There is a Unkunku coming through. There is a young breed of guys coming through. And Zidane with these guys, what they could do is amazing. But no, that's greedy. But if you're Zidane and you get disrespected like this, why are you going to go and go back to France? For what? For what? If I'm Zidane, I'm like, okay, screw you. Screw you. <laughs> screw you. You know? But the key thing here is, because I have to be very clear, this isn't France. It is the Federation, specifically great. <laughs> They're great, whatever his name is called. So it is specific people because... I don't want to put this on, oh man, French people just say, no, 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 no. But I do feel that maybe there might be some people that feel a certain way about West Africa and North Africa, a certain way. I'm not going to go into details, a certain way. But no, this isn't French people as well because I know the streets are with Zidane. Zidane will always have the streets. Just like Dinian, Zidane will always have the streets. He'll always have the streets. And that's the key thing. You can have all the accolades and everything. Do you have the streets? Do you have the streets? And the Zidane will always have the streets. God, yeah, man. The heck? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do you know who you're talking? Do you know who you're talking to? Wow. Sickening, man. Sickening. 